Um, hello, students. This is um, biology classroom uh, 0610 and the discussion on the question paper, uh, which is already uh, given to you, is a structure question about the respiratory system. The first question says the lungs and the kidneys are excretory organs of the human body. Define the term excretion. So what is the term excretion here? Yeah. The term excretion is the removal of um, those poisons, toxins, harmful substances, and uh, some waste products of the metabolism and respiration. Um, or the sub, sub, substances in excess like the salt and ions and water from the body of or organisms. So it is called as excretion. So this is how you can answer this part. It has three marks, so you have to be very careful. At least you have to mention three main important things about excretion. So excretion is the removal of the base products, toxins, or uh, um, uh, the Waste products, toxins, which is all produced by the um, products of the metabolism from the body of the organisms, or the, all those nutrients that are in excess, or the toxins, hormones. Question uh, part two of this question: A state an excretory product that is passed out through the lungs. A excretory product which is passed out through the lung. You know that one of the excretory organs is lung, so because it's for removal of the uh, uh, waste gases, gases and also water vapor uh, to the air from the body. So it goes uh, through the from the blood into the uh, alveolus by diffusion, and from there it goes out. And so the, one of those things that is actually excreted through the lungs or via the lungs is carbon dioxide, or you can also mention water vapor, water in the form of gas. So you can either write carbon dioxide or you can write uh, water vapor. So there are the, these two um, products are, that are excreted through the lung. On um, part three, outline the role of the liver in excretion. So what actually the liver does? So it has three marks. It means that at least you have to mention three uh, points into this. So the first thing is that in the liver, um, the um, proteins actually are made up of the amino acids and amino group, they have nitrogen, and that's the nitrogen inside uh, this uh, actually change or the molecule, which is uh, toxic for the body and should be get rid of. So during the deamination in the liver, the nitrogen part of the amino acid is actually removed, and uh, this nitrogen-containing part of the amino acid, it, uh, it makes urea. So the form uh, the, in the liver by the deamination, and the, which is removal of the nitrogen-containing part of the amino acid in the liver, the urea is formed. Then the urea pass into the blood. And also, in the liver, you can mention that the hormones, toxins, drugs, or the vitamins in excess, they will be broken down. Also, this one, the breakdown of the hormones, toxins, drugs, excess I mean, uh, vitamins, they happen in the liver too. And also, the red blood cells that are dead, they go to liver, and the liver break them down. Another job of the liver. And... Um, yeah, our excretory products also they go into the bile and they will be digested, but for example, cholesterol. So the answer is that again, I think I um, want to make it a bit clear. So that's what is happening here that the, this is your liver, the biggest gland in your body, and it is where the urea is being made, and then the, how the urea is being made. All those excess protein and amino acids, they are there. And through the process of deamination, the amino group, nitrogen-based uh, actually molecule, is omitted or deleted from that molecule. Then it is 
uh, change into urea. So the urea is produced in the liver, then it leaves the liver and it goes all the way into the blood and reaches to the uh, kidneys. In the kidney, it is actually uh, by uh, through the filtration, some other uh, nutrients or, or like water and the salt and others that will be added to it so it makes urine. So that is then, so the urine is being made in the uh, kidneys and urea in the liver. Another job of the liver, as I told you, is the uh, to break down the hormones, toxins, the drugs that you have taken because there are chemicals that are not so friendly with the body. They, are, they make uh, they should actually body be cleansed of it, and that's the job of the liver that does it. And it breaks down those drugs, toxins, poisons, hormones, excess vitamins that you have taken. If you have taken too much vitamin, which is not necessary by your body, it will be broken down. The, in the liver thing. and also the red blood cell that they die they go inside the liver and there they will be broken down so we go to the next part of this question uh, this figure is the actually this is the diagram of a kidney or the left kidney and then these are the arteries or the blood vessels they enter and they leave from this uh, a kidney. Why actually the blood uh, arteries they go in and out? So this is an artery and this is the vein. The, the one that's um, the artery, that's that's the one, the, the upper part. Uh, it sends the uh, blood that has um, still urea and all those. It's not refined yet. It's not filtered. And uh, it has some. Uh, uh, products that you need to your body need to get rid of it perhaps so it goes there it carries by the artery and send all the way into the liver in the liver it become refined or those things that should be like the urea definitely should be removed from it so it is cleared from the blood the rest of the things will return back into the blood and they go out of the kidney uh, via the uh, vein okay this one, the bigger tube here that you see is bent down, it goes down. This tube is the ureter. The ureter is responsible to collect all the urine which is made here inside this uh, tube, uh, new, uh, nephrons, yeah, and the, all this uh, kidney. So they carry it and put it inside this, at the beginning of this, in the pelvis, and then they all come into the ureter. And the ureter is a tube that just connected uh, your kidney to the bladder that sac inside under your belly. And then it is stored there temporarily until it has the time to get rid of it or excrete it. So the urine is passes through this. And there's this blood inside these vessels. There is urine inside this. Okay. This is um, the outer layer is a capsule. This is encapsulated here, and also the K, uh, this part, which is like, uh, we have a lot of pyramid here. We have a pyramid here, and this part, and this is, uh, this, this is the K actually, is the cortex, and this L is the burden you can find in their phones. Um, if I want to show, you so this is a structure a cover a structure of the kidney the internal view you see that this is exactly like that one this is covered only so this is the artery this is the vein this is through here the blood enters into the, the kidney and from here it exits in and out so the one that's sent in is artery the one that's sent out is vein so the blood that goes in is not refined yet. It's full of urea. It's full of all those unnecessary nutrients and the toxin, perhaps. But once it goes there, it is refined. So the refined blood should go out of the vein. It leaves the, your kidneys through the vein. So the vein should not have the vein, which is actually exiting the uh, kidney or the renal vein, shouldn't have any urea and, uh, and those toxic products. So. And other, and also you can see that we have uh, around this, uh, around this uh, area. If I want to show a better one, uh huh. That part that you see just put like 
uh, all like just define the boundary between the different tissue in the diagram here. Yeah? But this part is the capsule, the very small thin layer is the capsule around it. And then we have pyramid, which is called as a medulla. This is medulla. These are medullary pyramids, medullary pyramids. There are the pyramids, but here, that, that's from here. And most, most of this uh, actual space of this uh, kidney is taken by the medulla. And then you have cortex. Cortex is not very uh, actually thick, not too big, and also uh, extends between these um, uh, actually medulla part of these pyramids. You can see even there are between the medulla there is this some cortex. And what else we can see about this? And you see the ureter is sending the urine out. It's a better diagram here. Now, the question table shows the function of part of the kidney. Complete the table by naming the part of kidney that carries out each function. You have to name that part or that instead of the label you have to put uh, name of that part and use letters for labeling to identify the part of the kidney which is named. You should have to see that part of the kidney uh, is labeled with which letter. So, function blood is filtered. Blood is filtered in which part of this uh, kidney. Blood is filtration happens in the cortex, which is shown by K. Why happens in the cortex and why K? Uh, let me go up. So this is cortex, this very small area, and also extends between these pyramids, but what doesn't show here? Well, the filtration happens here. Why the filtration happens here? Because you know that the filtration happens in the Bowman capsule and the glomerule. Okay, so well, the glomerule and Bowman capsule, they are both placed in the cortex. And which part of the nephron is inside the, um, is on the medulla? The only the loop of Henley and also the collecting duct. So loop of the Henley and the collecting duct are placed, both of them, in the medulla, this part, in the pyramid. But the head, the rounded head, head which is made of the, that Bowman capsule and also the glomerulus, is both they are placed in the section K, which is cortex. So if they, uh, and that's where where actually we have ultra filtration or filtration happens is in the glomerulus and Bowman capsule. Okay, so that's what you have to say is that the answer is cortex, blood is filtered in the cortex, and the letter is K. Okay. Now look at this structure. This is a better view of that. This is one section of the kidney. You see this part. This is this is the medulla, or these are the pyramids of medulla medullary pyramids, and this are this is the cortex here. And you see here there are a lot of capillaries here, venules and arterioles, and here also we have uh, this structure. This is a nephron, one nephron, two nephrons. Nef the, this part, which is darker, this section is the medulla, this is cortex. You see the head of the nephron, this is the glomerule, and also this is the Bowman capsule. Both of them are inside the cortex. Then this is the proximal uh, convoluted tubule, uh, still here inside the cortex, and then these, we have these Henley, lube of Henley, which is inside the uh, medulla. And also we have, a, this is a collecting duct, the big one. This is also in the uh, medulla. So lube of Henley and this part, the are both in the medulla. And you can see another diagram here. So this is the collecting duct, lube of Henley, and this is the glomerule and the, the head of the nephron. And this is a Bowman capsule. 
this part, this part is in the cortex, which is responsible for filtration, ultrafiltration. And this part that the, that uh, condensation of the urine actually happens is in the medulla. And this is a collecting dog, or, or collects all the urine from all the nephrons, and then collects, gathers them, bring them, put them inside this pelvis. The entrance of the ureta empties inside, so the urine will be formed as empties here and carried all the way to the ureta and goes to the bladder. Now, so the first one, where the blood is filtered, it is in cortex, name of the part, and the letter is K. Concentration of the urine is determined medulla. That's where the urine is concentrated because that's the, where the loop of Henley is. And also L, the letter is already written for you. So we said that the loop of Henley and the collecting dog are placed here in this area, which is called as medulla. And it is shown by the letter A. It's labeled by L. So why the, why the urine become constant and condensed, concentrated or condensed? Because it's, um, actually the water here is lost as reabsorption of the water happens here. Okay, in the loop of handling. The next one, urine flows to the bladder through which a structure, urine goes to bladder. So this is structure, which is N, and the name is ureta, this tube. So the next one, blood flows out of the kidney. Blood flows out of the kidney through, uh, the direction is also shown, this is the vein, renal vein. So this is where the blood leaves the liver, uh, the kidney. So the label is also O. So, Part C, people with kidney disease are often treated in renal dialysis clinics. Their blood passes through tubes lined with a special membrane for about three hours. Stage two waste substances are removed from the blood by dialysis. Why do we need to use dialysis and what are those main uh, substances that we need to remove from the blood so you can save the people that have kidney failure or the kidneys they don't work properly so one of you can write any like any of these two it can be urea it can be ammonia it can be uric acid you can write salt or ions in the uh, excess like sodium chlorine, magnesium, calcium, if they are in excess, water, excess, water in excess, toxins, toxins like the drugs or any kind of thing, or if you're overdosing yourself with the vitamins, so they're called as a toxins too, uh, any poisons, they need to be removed. Hormones, hormones also need to be regulated, they need to, if they are in excess, they need to be also removed. So you can write urea or you can write ammonia, you can write excess salt or ions, excess water, excess hormones, and also toxins, poisons in the body. They should be removed by these excretion in the kidney. Uh, so if the kidney can't work, the, the dialysis, the, uh, you need to uh, do this for that patient. Kidney patients may be given a kidney transplant, state one advantage and one disadvantage of kidney transplant compared with dialysis. And what is the kidney transplant first? As you can see in a kidney transplant, we have a donor and we have a recipient. The donor who has um, both kidneys should be, for example, uh, healthy. So it can actually do that. Otherwise, because one, one kidney is enough to do the job to work, but both should be actually healthy. So then when they take that one out, and they actually uh, implant it in the body of that person that has uh, a diseased kidney, and the kidney, they don't work well. So the, and there are actually advantages, and these advantages which come with this kind of the operations.
The first thing, the positive thing or advantage or benefit is that the patients do not need to frequently go to the clinic for dialysis. So they do not need to every week, for example, two or three times a week, visit the clinic or the dialysis, for example, centers to just do, um, you know, to refine the body from the toxins or to remove the urea or whatever. Because, because the, the kidney doesn't work, so they need to do it by that machine, the dialysis machine. So now if they have done that transplant or they have their own kidney, kidney uh, healthy kidney now, which is, for example, donated by someone else, so it's good now they less frequently they can, they, actually they don't go need to do that anymore. And also they can uh, eat whatever they, they like. Whenever, whatever, there is no restricted diet for them. And also, because, you know, some of the diets, so the people that they have problem with the kidneys, so we should be very careful because they are not able to get rid of the urea properly. So they should use uh, products that uh, they do not increase the urea in the body. What are they? They are the foods that are proteins, amino acids, because amino acids are the source of the nitrogen, and that's the nitrogen from the amino acid that makes urea in the kidney, in the liver. So that's why they should take less protein, less amino acids, so they can control the condition. But now after the implant, after the transplant, they won't have any kind of problem with it because now they can normally uh, filter the body from urea. And, and also, they will be usually back to the normal life. So become healthy again, so you do not be absent from the work. But now, what are the disadvantages? What are those uh, negative points? Um, it means that um, they need some kind of the drugs to use called as the immunosuppressant. It means that they suppress or they lower down the immune system immunosuppressant and uh, why do they do that because they because your immune system uh, usually may they may find out that kind of tissue or that organ a foreign tissue a foreign cell and they attack it because your your cells every cell has its own identification it has its own antigen one it is not known by the body or known as a foreign matter that your body cell or the white blood cells will attack it, your immune system attack it and destroy it. So we won't, don't want it to happen. So the patient that I have done the transplant, they use those drugs to lower down or weaken the immune system so they do not reject the tissue or do not damage it. Another thing is that um, they may cause, they may have some infection after the operation or, or a risk of the death during or after operation because of any kind of infection or injuries. And also, the kidney may be rejected finally because the body is not recognized by the body again. Um, and it's also very hard to find someone, a donor, that is able to donate a compatible you know, kidney, something, a kidney which is suitable for you. And these are all the disadvantages of doing the, this kind of transplants or um, Now, question number two. Again, the diagram. Name the structure label E, F, and G. E, F, and G. So we have already done this. So this, uh, this tissue, which is uh, actually goes between the pyramids and also here and it's not very thick it is cortex and these are that they look like the pyramid or here the most of the space of the kidney actually it is uh, again by it is uh, labeled as f is medulla and the g here that tube that sends the urine out of the out of the kidney is called as ureter I think on this one should become easier. Now it has three marks. Each of these ones has one mark. Explain the function of the renal capsule. 
in the kidney. It has three modes. The renal capsule, <clears throat> actually, if I want to say this is a kidney capsule which is surrounds the uh, kidney, but it, it is, means that from the renal capsule, it means that uh, this part that I was showing, it means uh, the glomerul and also Bowman capsule. It means that part. So let me show a better uh, view of that. Look at this structure. This is the rounded part. It's like a cup shape. It's a Bowman capsule. And this is glomerulus. This bundle of the erythroids and uh, a lot of capillaries here that are inside this capsule for the filtration that happens here. So um, ultra filtration happens in this structure, which is in the initial part of the nephron. And in this part, there is a high blood pressure that lets the filtrate to pass through the glomerular, glomerulus capsule and also capsule. So why it has a high pressure? Because here, the, uh, the, uh, the, the actually the, uh, the capillaries, when they want to go off, the afferent one becomes a little bit narrower. The lumen is narrower compared to the afferent one, which is sending the uh, blood inside the glomerulus, inside the Bowman capsule. So the one that goes out is a bit, uh, the lumen is smaller, so that one gives higher pressure. So the blood here has a higher pressure. So under the high pressure, it actually diffuses outside or filters out into the Bowman capsule. And in the Bowman capsule, um, so the, we have filtrate there. Uh, and also the proteins, uh, blood cells, and all those things, because they all have also they all become, they are very big molecules, and they have a complex, big structures, they won't actually be filtered here. So in the filtrate, or what is passed into the Bowman capsule, we do not see any protein. We do not see any red blood cells or any kind of the blood cells, okay? Because they are quite big, they don't pass through that. And also, um, then the some like the, for example, water, dissolved salts, ions, glucose, urea, they pass through and they form filtrate. Uh, in the, uh, they pass through the, uh, this glomerulus and they enter into the Bowman capsule. But most of the glucose here and this proxima convoluted tuber or uh, PCT, uh, which is closer to the Bowman capsule, all will be reabsorbed back into the vein and they go out. But only some part of the salt that are excess, some water which is in excess, some ions that are excess are too much uh, that need that they will be kept here in, inside the, uh, together with the urea and they form again urine here in the tube of Hanley. And here the water is lost again goes back or reabsorbed into the uh, blood stream and so here your urea your urine forms and become condensed become thick and then moves out and collects into the collecting dog and then goes into the bladder so the renal capsule function in the kidney is to is ultra filtration or the filter all those uh, like the small small molecules of the glucose uh, water ex uh, or salts ions urea all they filter it into the ca Bowman capsule and there the some part of the uh, however more all the urea will be kept but the glucose will be actually uh, reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and uh, that some of the things like the protein were very big they won't actually be filtered here they don't enter into the urea they, they, don't, they don't enter into the Bowman capsule they just stay inside the bloodstream blood blood cells all the blood cells they stay in the bloodstream uh, anything which is too big they won't pass through that and they stay inside so the next uh, question, glucose is reabsorbed back into the blood by active transport. Active transport is like transport of the molecules. It's like diffusion. 
is like osmosis and diffusion. But in the osmosis and diffusion, we do not need, the body doesn't need to uh, invest or use energy to do that. Because that's normally the molecule, they move from where they are more to where they are less in concentration, down the concentration gradient. But um, the active transport is transport of the molecule because um, by using energy, we need to use ATP energy. Why? Because we are moving them against the gradient, against the concentration. It means that we send from where they are low to where they are more. Okay, sometimes. So we need for this to use energy. So that's why we call it that it's active. Now, I, it says define the active transport. So it's a movement of the ions or the large molecules to the cell membrane and against a concentration gradient, against a concentration gradient using energy or ATP from respiration. And it uses protein as a, a transporters or carriers here. The proteins are used here to transport the, uh, these molecules from where they are less to where they are more. It means from against a concentration gradient. <laughs> so the things that are very necessary here to write about this when you are defining is once it is a movement of the molecules through the cell membrane. This is very important. Okay, how? By using energy, this is very important, energy of respiration. And then against the concentration gradient, it means from where there are less to where there are more. Okay, these are what you have to mention, what have to write. Give one example other than glucose of a substance that is reabsorbed in the blood from the renal tubule. Okay, so one of them can be water can be salt, can be minerals, or any kind of ions. You can write water, salt, minerals, other than glucose in the renal tubule, and that proximal convoluted tubules, and the others, it means the renal tubule, or that tube, long tube, the reabsorption of the matters happens there, is it? Okay, so what matters are reabsorbed? The glucose, definitely. You do not find any glucose in the urines, that's why. All should be reabsorbed. What else? Can be water. You can write water, you can write ions, you can write salts, you can write minerals. Part E dialysis is a treatment for kidney again. So this is the dialysis machine. What's the question here? The composition of the dialysis fluid changes as it passes through the dialysis machine. Complete the table. Show the words high or, or the stay the same or none for this. Okay. Concentration of substance in. We have glucose, salt, urea, and the toxins. Blood before the dialysis, it has normal glucose concentration, high in the salt, high in urea, and high in toxins. What happens to it? If it is used, uh, used dialysis fluid in the, in the dialysis fluid and in the fresh dialysis fluid, I mean the, the fluid which is entering uh, inside, inside the machine and the one which is leaving the machine. Now, say, show it on the diagram. <laughs> this is the used dialysis fluid and this is the fresh. Fresh means that the, we send the fluid here, the fl fresh fluid. That is uh, actually the purpose is to do the uh, all the uh, nutrients exchange here, and then when it, uh, all the filtration actually is done, it goes into this other tube and is collected here, and we call it as a used dialysis fluid. It is after filtration, after dialysis, before dialysis, and after dialysis. What happens to this fluid that we have actually used in the machine? So, <clears throat> the first one, the first one says that the glucose is normal before dialysis. So if the if before the dialysis, in the, it, it, the person who is patient has a normal glucose concentration, the blood usually in the used dialysis fluid after, uh, in the fresh dialysis fluid, the fresh dialysis fluid uh, should be the same all the same, 
and for the salt, which is very high in his body, uh, before dialysis is very high, so you see that uh, it becomes very low. It should be low after that. You should remove some salt from the body to remove the salt. It has too much excess salt, so it should be removed. And we have here a urea, which is very high again, which is very toxic for the body, and it should be actually removed from the body. It is very essential. So urea is high, is nine again, and toxin high, high and low. So in the use of the LSS fluid, you have to find a lot of high amount of urea. And in the fresh dialysis fluid, it shouldn't be anything. You shouldn't find any urea. Salt, it should be normal. But here, you should find some low. Or if it is high, maybe high. Or, but not because all is, or you can write like, same or uh, low. Low is better. So low and fresh diazid fluid is some or same. Glucose is normal, so usually it stays the same, should it stay the same, or the glucose is some again here. Same we have and normal. The thing is that we should actually provide in the dialysis fluid some of these uh, things that are necessary. It should have some salt in it, um, which is necessary if the salt of the body is too uh, is low. So it provides uh, the body with the necessary salt. But it shouldn't have any urea. It should be quiet, fresh, and clean. But uh, it shouldn't have any toxins in it. And also uh, about the... Uh, glucose should be the same as the body glucose usually, but if it, this body glucose is very high in the dialysis flow, you shouldn't find any also glucose again. So uh, usually in the, the, the dialysis, for example, fluid, the fresh one, uh, the glucose level is the same, but in the concentration, it should also stays the same usually. And there's no change in that. Um, I'll explain how a dialysis mach machine filters the blood. So step by step, the dialysis machine is partially permeable membrane. It has, I just move up to show you here and this, how it works, okay? So the dialysis machine is a partially permeable membrane, uh, the membrane of the dialysis, and it has in the... Uh, it, the purpose of the dialysis is to uh, move uh, or exchange the mineral salts, ions, and also remove urea from the blood by diffusion. So in, in this way, uh, usually these kind of the substances, they move from high concentration to low concentration, down the concentration gradient, because we have partially permeable membrane there. It means osmosis happened there. Okay. So water moves by osmosis. Uh, and also blood cells are too large. They won't pass across the membrane, this uh, partially permeable membrane. And also glucose is not removed by dialysis, always has the same concentration there. Um, and also we try to regulate all these uh, matters inside the body, all these substances. Whatever, the urea should be removed definitely, glucose stays the same, salt uh, will be provided if necessary. Uh, the large molecules like the proteins, blood cells, and all they stay in, they don't actually move in and out. So now you have to fill up this again. I think it looks like the same. How? I think it should be like all the same. So, <clears throat> so.
So I move down. The next question is F. Kidney transplants are the most common organ transplants. Describe the advantage of the kidney transplant compared with the dialysis. So we already have discussed this one, but I will explain to you the answer again. Um, they, need, uh, they do not need to change the diet anymore. So they can just go on a normal diet because for the person who has a kidney problem, they need to or have not done the transplant, they need to do dialysis. So they need to watch their diet. Not too much protein should be taken. And then uh, what for the person who has uh, done the transplant, they can take anything. And also, they do not need to visit hospital frequently for dialysis. And they do not become unwell frequently, no tired, no nausea, no headache, no they have less pain after surgery. And there is no need to inject for injections, needles. So uh, that's all the advantages. OK, now we go to the next question again. Before a kidney is transplanted, it is important to match the tissue type of the donor with the tissue type of the recipient. Donor, it means the person who is donating the kidney, and you should have a healthy kidney, to the patient for transplant or operation. State why this is necessary. Why it is necessary to check, to match, to see if they match together or not. Or the thing is that uh, if they don't match together, uh, if they are not actually suitable for the body uh, actually of that patient, it may reject the tissue, it may reject the organ, it may reject the new kidney. So, and also in this way, they avoid the rejection. If they check and match it, they make sure that they, are, they actually, they are compatible, then they, uh, they, this rejection won't happen. And also, they don't let the immune system of the patient to attack the new kidney or the uh, new tissues that are entered into uh, his body. What is the term excretion? Again, so I explain again this one. Removal of the toxins, uh, harmful substances, poisons, um, waste products of metabolisms, um, from the body of the organism um, are all those substances that are in excess. Again, we have a nephron. This is a shape for uh, the photo of a nephron in the kidney. This is the basic unit of kidneys. The kidney are made of a lot of these nephrons. Um, question, part one of this question was that. So you have to answer this question. State the substances or substance or substances in the table has molecules which are too large to be filtered. Too large to be filtered. Look at here. The concentration of the solute, the solute in fluids at region 1 to 2 forward determine this result or as this. I just go back a bit. One, two, three, and four. So one is the in the um, this is the artery glomerulus. Bowman captured that the filtration happened here, that the uh, actually urine is formed. And then this is the uh, vein or renal vein that where they collect all the uh, blood which is refined and now send it out of the kidney. And this is the collecting duct. Uh, the urine actually which is formed all is goes towards the um, pelvis of the kidney and then to the ureter and from there it goes to the bladder. So here we have urine and here urea is filtered. The filtration, reabsorption, condensation, and the urine is formed final and goes transported to the bladder. So um, at which part is said that the biggest part, I'll just go back to the question one more time, has molecules which are too large to be filtered. So 
In which one, do I have molecules that are too large to be filtered? It is usually in this wine. In the wine, wine has molecules that are too large to be filtered, like, for example, protein, like uh, blood cells. Let me see. Number one, you see, protein is very high. In which part, in which region, region one? Where is the region one, the one that I told you already? This is the artery. Sorry, high in protein. Protein is one of the substances that cannot be filtered. It's very large, high. So this is the answer, region one, protein has molecules which are small enough to be filtered, but is completely reabsorbed from the fluid in the kidney tubule. Here, look at glucose. Glucose should not be in the uh, urine, so all of it should be reabsorbed. We have region one, two, three, four. So re it is all reabsorbed in the region four. Nothing is left from it. It had been a small, it passed through it is filtered, actually. It gone into the uh, filtrate. It formed the filtrate. It goes into the nephron. But at the end, in the region 4, you see, there is nothing left from it. It's reabsorbed, all reabsorbed. So that's glucose. What, which region? Region 4. Conducting tube. So increases in concentration as fluid move along the kidney tubule two actually is mentioned to increases in concentration as fluid moves along okay salt and urea you see at the end as you going along it become more the concentration become higher and higher increases in concentration as fluid moves along the kidney tubule going along the kidney tubule region one two three four this is going along one, two, three, four. This is the artery, Bowman capsule. Uh, this is the tubules, and then conducting tube, or you, yeah, conducting tube. So this is the way that the fluid moves along the kidney, and it should be increasing concentration. So eight, eight, nine, six, sixteen point five is increasing. This is two, two, then becomes twenty. So salt and urea is the answer. Which region? Region, usually happens in region four. State three structures through which the fluid from region four passes as it leaves the body. So as it leaves the body, leaving the body, uh, okay. Three structures through which the fluid from region four, region four has which fluid? already has urine. So the structures that urine can move into them, what, are, what is the name of them? That I can, at least three of them you have to mention here. One of them is pelvis. The other one is ureter. The other one is bladder. The other one is urethra. So we said that Oh, don't look at this diagram, actually. I have two kidneys. Paul, I have two kidneys. Well, because it's transplanted. So I can't show on this one uh, or either this one. So the, so the urea is actually being condensed here. So this makes urine. So urine actually moves into this is the ure, This is the ureter. Ureter. And moves the urine, which is formed in the kidney, and send it to the bladder. And the bladder actually is just stored. And then the small part, ending part, this tube is called as a urethra. So in all these three structures, you can find urine. And also at the initial part of the kidney here, it is called pelvis. Like the pelvis uh, bone of your hip is also pelvis here. This is called as pelvis. And here also you can see urine. So urine in the pelvis, ureter. And also, this is ureter. And this is bladder and urethra. These are the places. 
um, they have a, actually urine in them. And uh, one role of the kidney is to maintain the concentration of the blood plasma, name the process of maintaining constant conditions within the body. So it is the uh, one process, the process that maintains your body uh, conditions uh, and keep them in a constant uh, normal level, everything is called as hemiostasis. Hemiostasis. So we have different types of the hemiostasis. We can define it in many way. Homeostasis can be like for uh, regulation of the water in the body. Homeostasis can be regulation of the temperature in the body and maintain the body temperature. It can also be uh, uh, regulation of the uh, blood pH. It can be regulation of um, uh, water, water concentration in the body. And these are the different uh, things that we uh, actually are or under the realm of these process called as homeostasis. So in the homeostasis, you maintain, for example, body temperature, you maintain the pH of the blood, you maintain the, um, for example, the water concentration, we call it as an asthma regulation. And also uh, we have the sugar level, for example, the sugar level of your body, uh, of your blood glucose regulation, also called as a homeostasis, a kind of homeostasis. So this is the, um, all actually under homeostasis. Homeostasis is to maintain a constant condition within the body. It can, what condition? It can be pH, it can be sugar, it can be water level, it can be temperature. So that's it. Thank you, students, for your attention. And this is the end of this question, the topical question for multiple choice for the excretory system. I will be back to you with a, a new um, a past paper topical question and the discussion on them. Thank you very much. Stay happy and healthy. See you again.